All right, so welcome. We're going to start with uh, meditation, a supported five minute meditation. We're going to use a chair and a bolster for support. I'm gonna have Brigitte who's demoing today, show the pose actually in the middle of the room, but I'm gonna want you to take your chair against the wall and eventually she will also, okay? But it's just hard to see the setup if she's against the wall. So I'm gonna stand behind the chair to be the imaginary wall. She's going to sit in Sukhasana, cross-legged pose. And then she's going to lean back. Okay? So it's not a vertical pose, right? It's a reclining pose. And what you want to feel is a spreading across the front of your chest like that. Okay? Now, as I said, I wouldn't do it in the middle of the room. You'd have to have a pretty sturdy chair. Instead, take your chair against a wall. Okay, so I'm gonna let you do that. So for those of you just joining us, we're starting with a five minute meditation. And for today's class, we're going to use a chair and a bolster so that it's not a vertical spine like we often work with. Yeah, so you're slightly leaning back. Are you sliding? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> I push. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, it's just um, clarifying if, if she was sliding, I would suggest a sticky mat. Is it 10 minute meditation? It's just a five minute meditation, yeah. Okay, so get yourself settled. Remember, she doesn't need height under her buttocks to sit on the floor like this, but some of you I know do. Now cross right at your mid chin area. Take your feet directly below your knees. And then allow the muscles of your back to spread from the center out to the sides. So this is different than if you were sitting upright. When we sit upright, we draw the muscles of the back towards the spine, but lying back like this, we're allowing the muscles of the back to spread away. What we're looking for here is creating a spreading sensation, not only across the back area, but especially across the front. So you feel that from the center of your chest, you're spreading the right side of your chest towards your right shoulder, left side of the chest towards your left shoulder. We're creating space and freedom in the chest area. So as we're living through this global pandemic, which is very bad in a lot of places, including where I'm streaming from. A lot of people have been exposed to the virus. Some people having, you know, a stronger um, reaction to it than others. So in order to provide a recovery sequence and also a preventative sequence, you know, again, I just wanna teach something aimed towards this disease. So Iyengar says, wherever there is space and stillness, prana flows. So prana, we've talked about the word prana, how it's a kind of vital energy in its crudest sense. Some people think about it as respiration. You could even think about it as circulation, but it's not following the circulatory system. It's really circulating everywhere in the body. So if you're familiar with Chinese medicine, I think the equivalent word would be qi. I know from having acupuncture, I feel it. I feel that qi or that prana very much. So we're 
looking to create space and stillness in that chest cavity in other areas will come, but initially in that chest cavity so that we continue to nurture the heart and the lungs. We're allowing this starting meditation to be one in which you're leaning back and relaxing. You know, we have to remember that yoga is not all effort. If it were all effort, it would be exercise, which of course there's nothing wrong with, but it's not all effort. It's this beautiful combination of effort and letting go. And especially those of us that are always going, doing, thinking, it's that letting go side of yoga that's so important. So if there's a part of you right now that thinks, oh, but I can sit upright and why aren't we sitting upright and this is too easy, then you really need to do this. <laughs> So we've talked a lot about the pranavayu, which is exactly, exactly that chest box area. And there's a particular circulation of prana that occurs in that area. It's maybe easier to feel prana in the chest than any other part of the body at first. Eventually you should be able to feel it everywhere. But because of the association of prana with breath, of course, with the lungs being there, and we start to feel that. Now, don't pull and drag your breath. Okay, some of you have had that experience and you know that that can result in a headache. So if you catch yourself feeling a throbbing in your head, check whether you're unconsciously overworking your breath. So in the practice of Iyengar Yoga Asana, you know, other than one pose, we don't change our breath to do the poses. However, our breath changes while we do the poses. So do you see the difference? It's a letting go and that's how the breath changes. Now there's a separate practice of pranayama that we do. And then yes, we manipulate the breath. But with that practice, even more than with an asana practice, you have to be careful you're not overdoing. Okay, so now change the cross of your legs and now sit upright. You can just leave everything behind you and we'll do the invocation. So this is a wonderful opportunity. So sit upright, you don't need the support. Join your hands together at your heart. This is a wonderful opportunity to just do a compare and contrast, right? So now as you're sitting upright, now you can feel the muscles of your back. They have to wake up, right? Now they have to draw towards the spine to create a sense of stability. Legs should feel relaxed. If you haven't yet, close your eyes from top to bottom. Uh... Chitasya Padena Vacham Malam 
Shairasya Chavai Chakena Yopa Kadertam Pravaram Muninam Patanjalim Pranjalir Anantosmi Abahu Purushakaram Shankar Chakrasidariyam Sahastra Shirsam Shredam Pranamami Patanjalam after sitting, after chanting, feel that vibratory quality inside that chest box area. So that's a feeling of prana. And part of the reason we chant, there's so many reasons, but it starts to prepare the body for the practice of yoga, starts to churn and circulate prana in the chest area. Now lift your chest up. Release your head to your hands. Release your hands to your thighs. And then raise your head and allow your eyes to open. Okay, so we're starting, uh, we're continuing, I should say, with Adho Mukha Virasana. We're setting up with two blankets. So it's a setup, not sure if I've taught it before. So grab two blankets. I'll show it and then Rishi can do it. Put the chair most way back. Okay, so you take your blankets as they come off the shelf. This is the size that we acknowledge as coming off the shelf. I'm not sure what your shelf looks like. <laughs> then we're going to fold the blanket and then we're going to fold it one more time. Okay, so it's a rather thick blanket. Okay. You're going to do the same thing. Go ahead, Brigitte. You can do the same thing with the other blanket. I'll bring the camera a little closer. Yeah. So now she's going to show the pose facing you. Um, separate your knees apart. Yeah. So she's going to have one blanket under her abdomen and one blanket under her forehead. There you go. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if there's a fickleness to my cat in terms of his relationship with Brigitte, or whether he's gonna he's gonna circle her for the rest of the class. Okay, so come into the pose. Let your abdomen and chest rest on that squared blanket. If anyone, oh yeah, that's fabulous. If anyone um, doesn't feel like the blanket is supporting them, then you can always, you know, add a second blanket in those two areas. So, you know, part of doing yoga from home is this idea of using Svajaya self-study, being clear about how the pose feels, and then taking initiative and adding more blankets if you need them. And of course, if anyone doesn't feel comfortable taking this pose on the floor, you can imitate this setup with two chairs. If you need me to show that, just let me know. So now with the front ribs and abdomen supported, right? We talked a lot about the benefits of proning or lying in a prone position when it comes to working either during COVID or COVID recovery. But you know, anything that we're doing specifically for COVID can also be utilized for any other respiratory ailments or a lot of things, huh? So hopefully you don't need this for COVID recovery, but it's there if you do. So as you rest your abdomen and chest on that blanket, 
allow your side ribs and back ribs to expand. So again, we're not forcing the breath and you know, I feel like I can't say it enough, but we're allowing the breath to come instead of through the front ribs, which is how most of us breathe most of the time, it's coming through the side and back ribs instead. So with everything that we do in yoga, as we bring our mind to the possibility of something happening, lo and behold, it starts to happen. So a lot of us, you know, have many years of college where we were trained to be skeptical thinkers. I know I was in my training at UCLA, it was all, you know, prove, you have to prove something's wrong, right? But in yoga, we have to have a, a certain amount of faith and we have to remember the past and our practice, how we didn't think we would ever be able to do whatever it was. And now we do it without thinking about it. So breathing through your side ribs, through your back ribs, you might say, well, whatever, I don't think I can do that. But if you just invite the possibility, it'll happen. Okay, so now we're doing Parivrita Adho Mukha Svanasana. So what you'll do here, do you want me to show? Okay, so what Brigitte will do is she's gonna take her arm through, she's gonna lie on the side of her head. You sure you don't want me to show? Yeah, yeah, okay, sorry. There we go. <laughs> She's determined. I like it. <laughs> okay. So let me see if I can show this without moving her from the side. So this is an open belly twist, which is fine for, you know, ladies that are menstruating. Okay. Is that clear now what we're doing? So it's a revolved version of a familiar pose. And you can see now why I chose the setup I did because you might've thought, well, why don't we just use a bolster? It would be so much easier. <laughs> Siona, are you clear about what's happening? Yes, I, I just want to ask you, is it okay to do that if I have a little shoulder issue? Well, it, there's no pressure on the shoulder. So I would try it. And if it doesn't feel good, I'd stop doing it and go back to what we were doing instead. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. The predictability of shoulder issues is a little tough. Okay. <laughs> but don't stay if it doesn't feel good. I have a question, Cora. Yes. Could you just, because I get confused with right, left, and could you just say, say that? In, so yeah, as, so as the get left arm it? is going to go through the blankets. And I'll tell you, Bev, the reason I didn't say it is because Brigitte has her right arm through because she has to do the opposite of what I said. And I knew she was already trying to figure it out. <laughs> so the left arm goes through the blankets. You're on the left side of your head and your right hand is on the floor with your right arm bent. <laughs> Good, thank you for asking that. <laughs> So we know that twisting poses soften the rib cage. And we're not going for a strong twisting pose, right? It's not about a lot of effort. Of course, it takes some effort just to get us in the pose. But what I want you to feel instead of how much can I turn, I want you to feel how much can I let go? How much can I allow my inner costal muscles to soften? And then I just want to cue for those of you with scoliosis, right? You have a side where it's easy to turn and you have another side where it's difficult to turn. When you're on the easy side, take it easy. When you're on the side that's more difficult, you can work with a kind of intelligence. You have to, and even maybe stay a little longer. Okay, we all have a difference in our ability to twist side to side. So that cueing would apply to anyone, but you have to be clear about which side is which. Now, how does your breathing change as you're in this parivrita pose? Well, the breathing, everyone's breathing is a little 
restricted when we come into twisting poses. We're literally, you know, twisting the tissue of the lungs, but in a way that fortifies the tissue, brings circulation to that area. Okay, go ahead and come up. Just take a pause before you take the other side. So how does it feel after doing that? And then you're going to thread your right arm through the blankets and place your right ear down on the blankets. And then your left hand is on the floor. And you can have that left arm bent. Now the bent arm is the engine of the pose. I'm not asking you to use it, but you might want to if you have a scoliosis, right? Or if you know, oh, this side just is so much tighter. Let me just add a little bit. Less is more in working the way we are. So I want you to continue this idea of building a relationship with your breath. So I suppose you could think about building a relationship with your breath like you build a relationship with a new friend. So usually when we have a new friend, we're not super pushy about doing things together, right? You just kind of, oh, maybe we'll, you know, well, now I don't know what I'd say, what we do, but normally you might say, oh, let's go have a coffee or, hey, do you want to go for a walk, you know? You're not suddenly saying, let's spend all weekend. I just met you, let's spend all weekend together, right? So you just slowly develop a relationship with your breath. And first you kind of observe. When something's new, you observe it. Like a new friendship, you observe your friend. A new job, you, you, know, you don't come in and try and change everything. You say, what? I wonder what's going on here. Let me observe how things are functioning. And that's really ujjayi one in the sense of pranayama, which is breath observation. I Inger always said, you know, you have no right manipulating your breath if you don't even have a relationship with your breath. So as you're here, relax your jaw. Relax your throat, relax your tongue. And you'll find as you stay in the pose longer, the rib cage starts to soften. So what that really means is the intercostal muscles start to let go. But the whole rib cage, it's this sort of strong and supple structure, right? It's strong to protect your heart and lungs, right? And other organs that are below the diaphragm band area, especially in the back but it also is supple to support breathing. Okay, now come up and out. So now those of you that have two chairs, I think everyone does because they can be any kind of chair, take two chairs. So we're taking Parivrita Pavan Muktasana. Some of you who have been taking classes with me regularly, you can see that this class is, you know, an accumulation of the other classes. It's also a standalone class. So we'll start similarly. So you want to get that blanket under your abdomen. It probably won't be under your chest here, but we'll start here. Okay. Now, some of you are a little bit taller. So if your knees are higher than your hips, then you want to put a blanket or a mat on the seat of your chair. Okay. So go ahead and use your two chairs. 
Your blanket will go underneath your abdomen, right? That one squared blanket and then under your forehead, that's it. Now for Brigitte, just to explain what I meant in case you were curious, you can see for her, her hips are higher than her knees. So she doesn't need to support her buttocks. But others who have your knees higher than your hips, like I'm showing with my trusty yardstick, you wanna support your buttocks so your hips are higher than your knees. Make sense? If you, if you aren't clear, let me know. So it's a subtle adjustment, but it really allows your spine, your lumbar spine to move out of the pelvis in a way that will facilitate the work we're doing right now. So if you haven't met my big fluffy cat, Sabuti, seems like he's very interested in being part of our class. So those of you that do have knee issues, I just want to remind you that if we're working in the previous pose, Adho Mukha Virasana, and your knees are starting to bother you, you can always take this pose instead. So they're very similar poses. They're different too, of course, but you can feel that the impact on your knees is much less. You can have your feet slightly turned out here. Yeah, because the knees are out, the feet can be in line with the knees. Now again, you're feeling, now it's the abdominal area. Maybe you feel your diaphragm band area, that samavayu area pressing into the blanket. That would be good because that's gonna move your diaphragm band back into the front of your torso and allow it to spread from the center out to the side. Now at first, and Siona talked about this, doing these belly down poses can feel like it's harder to breathe. And that might be a lack of familiarity or it might be that the setup just wasn't right. So I'm curious, Siona, you, know, you don't have to come up now, but I'm curious to hear from you once you do, just to make sure you're doing okay with these. Now we're gonna take a parsva action so you're going to turn to the right. Yeah, take your left hand, uh -huh. hold onto the side of the chair and then put your right hand on your hip and turn. There you go. <laughs> and Siona's probably happy we're not doing so much face down today. <laughs> yeah. And I'll just say this, and I'm just speaking as a yogi, sometimes it's harder for women to do chest down poses. And I'm just gonna leave it at that and you can figure it out. So again, here you are, you have an opportunity to experience a sense of turning. So Irving, bring your Bring your right arm to the backrest of the chair and take your left hand on your hip. Even if you're turning the opposite way. Sorry, Brigitte, if it gets cold, let me know. No, peace. I see. Yeah. Yeah, so you're turning to the left, but it doesn't matter. You're getting the turn. So you have a pillow, your right arm or your left arm doesn't matter as the pillow. And you may feel 
again, that it's a little harder to breathe as we're doing these parivrita or twisting poses, but it's these twisting poses that are so beneficial for the tissue of the lungs. They're also a reminder not to try and heavy breathe, right? Because you can't. So if you were doing it, the parivritas kind of check you. So if you're a person that can over breathe, you can add these parivritas into your practice just to make sure you're not over working your breath. You know, you're going to come back to the center. Just take a moment with your head down, or you can sit up if you want to, we don't have to. And then once you've observed how the pose, to come out of the pose. Brigitte's not coming out. She likes it too much. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna now, once you've observed, you can twist to the other side. Okay, so now for most of you, your left arm will hold the backrest of the chair and your right hand will go on your hip. Or if you twisted the other way to begin, it doesn't matter, you'll just twist the opposite way. Yeah, so you catch the chair. Yeah, Miles, turn your hand the other way. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a small thing. Now, when you're holding onto the chair, again, you know, if you're a person that's always doing and going and busy, because I know a lot of you are not only working, but you have family and you know kids are at home, it's busy. You Karen, could be over holding on. So make sure you're not. Karen, is the head on top of the arm or on the- Head's on the arm. Yes, you're correct. Thank you. Head's on the arm. So again, you know, all of us will observe a difference twisting to the right as opposed to the left. We just observe these things so that we know how to be skillful in the way we work with our practice. So normally in February, I go skiing in Telluride. It's this, you know, I love it every year. I don't think I'm going this year. So, you know, that first day I'm skiing, I always observe my skiing and I think, oh, you know, my mogul skiing is not very good. Of course, I haven't skied in a year. So then I, I observe that and then I say, okay, I wanna work on that, you know? And then I'll start there and work on that. And then I'll say, oh, well, I'm not in control when I'm going very fast or, you know, it's just like that with anything. Yoga is a practice that develops our ability to observe ourselves when we're doing yoga, but really when we're doing anything. And that's when it really develops a mindfulness approach to living. So again, as we come into the parivrita, as we twist the body, you'll feel a restriction in your ability to breathe. Trust that that's beneficial. If it feels too strong, if you feel like, oh, I really can't breathe, of course, I don't want you to stay in the pose. You need to come up early, you'll come up early. All right, everyone now come up and out. Just sit up in your chair and observe how your breathing is much fuller after doing those parivrita poses, right? Do you feel that the rib cage starts to become soft and pliable? Now, I'm going to take an Ardha Uttanasana. So, Go ahead and pop up. I'm going to remove one of the chairs. 
And then some of you will need to put blankets on the seat of the chair, others will not. So we'll take the feet apart, come forward and be here. So it's an easy Ardha Uttanasana. It's fine if you're menstruating because the abdomen is soft in this variation. If it feels too strong, then add the blankets on the seat of the chair or a bolster or something else. So what I see Brigitte doing beautifully is you see the verticality of her hips and her heels. But many of you, because this is a less familiar pose, your legs are um, angular. So when I, I'm gonna give an adjustment, it's not, yeah, Genevieve, you could take your hips back a little bit. I see you, adjust, yeah, just a tad. Just, just remember you're doing well, so you don't need to make a big adjustment. Okay, Joelle, you could either bring your hips back or your feet forward. You may need a little bit more height underneath your forearms to be comfortable. So remember, this isn't the pose where, the class where you're going to improve your yoga poses. Although actually, if you can really let go, you will improve your yoga poses. Right, so one of the students is sharing that when she was actively sick with COVID, that twisting poses were incredibly difficult. But when she finished them, she felt so much better. And then she said she could measure her recovery by how much she could handle being in twists. So that's good information. Thank you for sharing. So as you're here, of course, legs are stable. There's a feeling of uplift in the legs. As always, the pelvis belongs to the legs. So that moves down. They're a team. And then you should feel a lot of freedom that your spine has moved out of your pelvis. Pavan Muktasana is a wonderful pose for that. So even here, you should feel that. Now, Brigitte's showing the pose without arching the low back. And I know she's doing that consciously because she could if she weren't paying attention. So just want to remind those of you that catch yourself doing that, you know, you can draw that navel band area up. Don't let the part of your body that naturally overworks, overwork in yoga. It's not yoga anymore. It's just life. So we're cultivating the opposite, right? Paksha, Pradipaksha, in the most direct sense of that sutra, you know, the areas that are flexible, we're making stable. The areas that are stiff, we're making flexible. And now walk towards your chair on an inhalation, come up and up. Okay, so I want you to bring the long end of your mat against a wall. We're taking Prasarta Pado Tanasana with the heels, back of the knees, and buttocks against the wall. And then I want you to have either a bolster or a bolster and a couple of blankets for head support. You just give me a minute to get the camera in a good angle. Do you want me to show Brigitte or are you ready to go? She's excited. You'll need whatever you need for your forehead to rest on the floor. Yeah, so she knows this from the days of having yoga classes in person. So if you're using a blanket, we'll fold it as if it were a bolster just because that way your arms can be shoulder distance. So she stepped into the pose, taking the back of her heels, back of her knees, back of her thighs and buttocks against the wall. I'm just gonna do her a solid here and get my ropes out of her way. And then without taking 
her legs or pelvis off the wall, she's gonna walk her arms forward. Yeah, and put her forehead down. So this will, you know, what you need underneath your head definitely varies from person to person. Now this is another standing forward bend that's absolutely fine for the ladies that are menstruating. Okay, or having digestive issues, you know, there's a lot of things that belong in that category. Um, for your sequencing, is it more important to have the Adha Mukha Shanasana action or um, my brain's not working? <laughs> it's okay. Yes, the, I want the Adha Mukha Svanasana okay. action because I can either be I can't be against a wall if I do that. So that or I can be over my bed, but then I not I don't have that action. So Ooh, that, I would go over your bed. Okay. For for re lots of reasons. Okay. Yeah. 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 So if everyone had the right height bed in their yoga space, I might have taught it that way, right? Because you were in class when we did it over the chair. Well, you took the bed and you were smart to do it because it's so much better. Okay, so be with your legs here. So you want to work with your legs similarly to how you did in Adamuka, sorry, in Uttanasana, excuse me. So the legs belong to the thighs, draw your outer knees into your outer hips, plug your outer hips in towards each other. So I'm just going to adjust Brigitte's top in case anyone was looking because it looked like she had a really strong scoliosis because <laughs> her top had, had come down in a very crooked manner. So I know most of you are in the post, but I don't always see everyone because not everyone turns on their camera. So just explaining what's going on. So some of you are taking um, the classic pose and it's not wrong, but I just want you to know that you're not taking this pose. So I'll explain it again. It's a hybrid pose. It's a combination of Prasarta Padottanasana, which is a wide leg pose and Adho Mukha Svanasana, which is downward facing dog. So we've worked with the front ribs, back ribs and side ribs. And so, it's a wonderful opportunity now to allow your breath to fill the inner frame of your ribs. And again, I'm not asking you to push your breath, but you'll feel, because we've worked with the breath through the poses, that your breath will, your ribs will expand with your inhalations and contract with your exhalations. Now we're not focusing on a contracting action. In fact, we want to keep that sense of expansion even in the exhalations. But the reality is the ribs move out and in. That's breathing, that's respiration. You now be with your hands, spread your fingers, open your palms. And you know, it's a longer hold here. It's a more effortful pose, pose than we've done so far. You can always come out of the pose early if you need to. I'll keep you updated. Actually, we're halfway through, so that's a perfect update. So how can you work in a pose that's a standing pose that requires some effort without overworking? Don't over breathe. If I can hear you breathing, Brigitte, you're heavy breathing. <laughs> She's like, it's not fair, they're muted. 
<laughs> well, here you go. <laughs> They're on the honor system. So, but it helps, you know, I always say this, it's so nice to have someone here. Of course, it's so nice to have Brigitte here, but um, then it's a reminder of me to remind all of you the kinds of things that happen. And it happens in this post because it does take a certain amount of effort to stay in this post. Yeah, Miles, you're doing the right thing. You could even stand in Tadasana with your feet apart just because it's a little more stable. You have the wall behind you. That's great. So if you were, you know, freshly recovering from COVID, then I would recommend that this pose be done, you know, over a bed. So legs wide and abdomen, chest, head on a bed. And if you were freshly recovering and this just felt too hard, then just come out of the pose and skip it. We're just down to 20 seconds. You decide the right amount of time, the right amount of challenge for you today. All right, everyone, to come out of the pose, you walk your feet away from the wall. Uh -huh, walk your hands back towards the wall, and then you can stand up in Tadasana with your feet slightly apart. Just be in Tadasana, bring your feet a little closer. Yeah, just be there, arms by your side. Mm -hmm. Notice your breathing, it really changes when you come out of the pose. So in terms of monitoring the amount of time you wanna stay in poses, this is a nice pose to come out to. There's a lot of observation that can happen here. Also, Tadasana, is a wonderful preparation for Salamba Shirshasana headstand. So I know not everyone does headstand, but those of you that are planning to do headstand today, I want you to really feel the verticality in Tadasana, right? A sense of your heels, knees, hips, shoulders, and ears all being aligned. And then from here, Take any setup for headstand. That means a classic headstand. You can go between six blocks. You can go between two chairs and any two chairs will work. Those of you that are not inverting today, you can set up for Supta Virasana. Or if that seems like a lot of work right now, you could do legs up the wall, legs apart. You can do Supta Virasana, right? Mm -hmm. So Brigitte will show the alternative pose, Supta Virasana. If anyone needs me to show legs up the wall, legs apart, just let me know. Okay, so again, any version of headstand is acceptable. So of course, a classic headstand with or without the wall. You can use four wood blocks, two foam blocks. I've shown that set up a few times. You can use two chairs. And then Supta Virasana is an alternative pose. It's a nice if you're menstruating. There's other reasons to take it. So Brigitte is showing that pose. Now she's not taking a blanket under her head because she doesn't need it, but many people do. So just to be clear, so let your arms rest on the floor. Just let, yeah, you can bend your arms. Yeah, so you can let go. So you can see what a lovely um, way this pose opens the front of the chest and the front abdominal area, okay? So as long as, um, all of you are busy. I'll just quickly turn the camera and show legs up the wall, legs apart. I know Supta Virasana is not for everybody. So I'm not taking any props, but you're welcome to have a mat and a blanket under your head. I'm just showing quickly so I can 
go back to being with all of you. So this would be a nice complimentary pose to what we've done so far. Gives you a little feeling of an inversion without needing to protect your neck and shoulders and various things. I didn't catch, um, let me see if I can catch that message better. Okay, so I think the message is saying I can show your heads down. Yes, okay, I just wanted confirmation. So now I'm showing heads down between two chairs with the permission of the practitioner. So she has two yoga chairs but actually any two chairs will work. I've seen so many people do this with dining room chairs, just different kinds of folding chairs, sometimes folding chairs that already have padding on them. So this is a wonderful pose. You wanna add the blanket so that the shoulders are not digging into the hard metal of the chair. And she has the blankets open, they can be folded. There's a lot of ways to set up. So if you try this and you're not comfortable, don't give up on it right away. Try adding more padding. Okay, thank you for sharing your setup. So those of you in a classic Shirshasana, you'll notice how the rib cage expands much more than it did in the previous pose because of the weight of your legs and pelvis over your rib cage. Your rib cage really gets a feeling of vastness. So the last time I saw BKS Iyengar was for his 90th birthday. And, you know, it was a big celebration and he did a lot of speaking engagements and things. I mean, I saw him in the yoga hall. It's interesting though, seeing him in the yoga hall, he looks a certain way, but then seeing him walk up the stage, the stairs of a stage in an auditorium, he looks very different. And what I'll explain what I mean. So the yoga hall, he just, you know, he just looks like he belongs there. Of course, it's his yoga hall. He spent most of his life in there. But what's so clear, what was so clear about him, you know, walking up the stairs of a stage in an auditorium is how barrel chested he was when he was 90, like enormously barrel chested. His rib cage was huge for the rest of his body. And that was because of his yoga practice, because of the 30 minute headstands he was doing even at 90 because of his pranayama practice. So, and the yogis that have been doing yoga for a while, you've probably noticed that certain shirts start to feel tight or certain bra tops start to feel tight, right? Because the rib cage for all of us expands. That's a good thing. So if you have a vastness in the rib cage, then your breath, your lungs, your heart, they're in a healthy state. Now soften and spread the samavayu diaphragm band area. Don't let that area push out and headstand. Those of you that are using two chairs, you can sink your shoulders down onto those chairs. Those of you doing classic headstand, of course, you've got to lift your shoulders up away from the floor. Those of you with your legs spreading apart on the wall, make sure you stay on the center back of your heels so that your feet, your toes are pointing towards the center of the room. Remember, in this pose, like every other pose we've done, if the pose is over, if you feel tired, just come out of the pose. If you've been upside down, rest your head. If your legs are tired, you can bring the bottoms of your feet together in a Baddha Konasana action. 
So we have another minute. Good, Joelle. I like what I see. Now, everybody, again, you have an opportunity to build a relationship with your breath. How has your breath responded to the pose that you're in? And then of course, when we observe the breath, we're also observing the way our mind responds to the breath, to the pose. The mind is also touched by COVID. There's definitely a lack of clarity that comes with the condition. I mean, it's true whenever we get sick, right? We just don't feel our mind's not doing well, but COVID has a particular effect. So watch your mind, know your mind. Know when it's not functioning well. Don't make important decisions when that's happening. All right, everyone, now with a sense of graceful control, come out of the pose you're in, rest your forehead if that's appropriate, bring the bottoms of your feet together if that's appropriate, and take time to observe the effects of what you just experienced. So now I want you to get your chair bolster. You can put your chair against a wall. You need the bolster so it's that set up. However, I want you to grab, if you have another bolster, take that. Don't worry if you don't. Take a big pile of blankets. If you don't have yoga blankets, take some pillows. Grab the throw from your sofa, whatever you need. So. At this point, we're instead of doing supine poses lying down, we're doing a kind of supine pose sitting up. Now, Carrie, I know a lot of seated work doesn't work for you, so you can translate these into, you know, a version that makes sense for you. Okay. So I'm gonna again show in the middle of the room, but then I will let Brigitte, of course, go to the wall. But it's easier to see the setup from the side. So she's gonna put the bolster where it was, but then she's gonna grab a second bolster and a bunch of blankets, okay? I'm gonna ask everyone to come to the screen now. This isn't taught that much. I mean, it is in Pune, but it's not taught that much in class and I haven't taught it on this format before. So like before, I'm gonna have her sit on the floor. She doesn't need to sit on anything. Some of you will. And then we're gonna add, just gonna use a bolster because I saw many of you do have two. Don't worry if you don't. We're gonna do, set things up. Here, I'll do it so we don't need as many props. So you're gonna take a blanket the long thin way and fold it. Here, sit up a little bit. Scoot out forward a little bit. There you go. Go more, a little bit more. There you go, okay. Now I'll come back. Oh, she's so short, actually, she doesn't need all this. <laughs> I didn't say that. So lift your head. I have to set up for her differently than some of you will need to set up. I'm gonna have her set up for me. Not that I'm that much taller, but go ahead and lift your head. So what we're trying to do here, go lie back. Okay, is to create a situation where she's leaning back and her head is back and supported. Does that make sense? Okay, now some of you are gonna have to sit on blankets to do this, so then you're gonna have to add more height under your head. So what I'll do now, let's have you sit on height. Here, sit on this. So you can see if she's sitting on height and she leans back, then she needs the support, right? I was like, what's going on? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Do you see now? So the what we're looking for, I'm not asking you to sit on height, but I know already that many of you need to. But I'm asking you to set it up so you can bring your head back and be in a relaxed position. And actually what we're going to do here is Baddha Konasana, bottoms of the feet together. 
Okay, so I'm gonna let her set up against the wall now. You ready? Because it doesn't feel it doesn't feel good to be in the middle of the room leaning back like that. And I wanna come close to the camera and see all of you and answer any questions that you may have. Yeah, I'm not really sure what an equivalent would be for me. So any version of Supta Baddha Konasana carry that you can take that feels okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, because I know, like I said, I know these seated poses aren't your cup of tea. So you've got the same bolster we began with. And part of the reason I started like that is to already have that part of this pose sort of familiar. And then we're adding extra props, right? Because we want the head to be back and supported. Here, I'm sorry about the moving the camera so many times, but I'm really looking for an angle that's helpful. There we go. I think that's it. Yeah, come on up because this is sliding. Yeah, that's sliding. So, yeah, and you can have a mat. <laughs> Just whispering different setup suggestions. <laughs> yeah. So it's nice to have the sticky mat. It makes it more comfortable for the outer edge of your feet. So it's supta. It's a kind of. It's not supta baddha konasana because you're not lying all the way back. You're sitting up. So this stage of the pose can be better for recovery if it's you had a strong experience with COVID or you're still in the middle of COVID and lying all the way down doesn't feel good. Now, this is true when you have a cold that's really in your chest. You might have found this. People often say, you know, it gets worse at night. The reason it feels like it's worse at night is how the mucus settles in your lungs. So if you're in that state in COVID or any other um, illness, you know, taking poses lying flat on the floor feels like lying in your bed. It doesn't feel great. So this stage is good. This is also this whole category of poses. Um, there's a whole category of these poses. We'll do a couple today. These are very commonly taught in the medical classes in Pune. And for all kinds of issues around, you know, the lungs, like asthma and different respiratory conditions. Now, at first, it might feel strange. You know, we, we like to lean into our familiar supta baddha. Oh, I just want to lie down on that bolster. <laughs> it's familiar. But, it's, you know, it's important for us to have a lot of poses that feel familiar. They all have a slightly different effect. So I'm seeing a lot of you, you know, spending a lot of time getting comfortable, and that's fine with me. Because as I said, it's different, it's new, so that happens. So the so if you're a person that has one of those wonderful wooden backbenders, which I have, I could have shown this pose with that, but then all of you would think, well, I don't have that prop. But if anyone does have that prop, setting up these poses against the tall end of that wooden backbender is how the pose is done in Pune and how it would be done if you had all the props you needed. Now, if the Udana Vayu, if the front of your throat feels hard, it means that you don't have enough height under your head. And then if your arms, you don't know what to do with your arms, you could always put two blocks under your hands. I'm just responding to what I'm seeing. So feel the effects of this pose. At first, you just feel like it's, you know, trying to figure it out, it's not familiar. Oh, that's fine, those are fine feelings. 
But as you start to settle in, as the body says, okay, I accept this setup, I accept this shape. Notice the feeling of your breath. Now, besides the pranavayu, which we've talked about the chest, the samanavayu, the diaphragm band, the apanavayu has a lot to do with our ability to breathe. It's softer here than when we lie down, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that can be very beneficial if, as um, someone in the class shared, you're in the middle of COVID and breathing is tough. Okay, now you're gonna keep your setup. Go ahead and sit up slightly, but keep everything. Now separate your legs apart for Upavista Konasana. So what's so nice about this wide leg setup and lying back, and lying back is it softens the groins. Mm -hmm. So for those of you that think, oh, not this pose, it's so hard for me. Remember, you can sit on height, but when you lie back, the pose will be easier than it usually is. If you have a question, I'm right here. I know I'm off camera, but I see Nancy, I see you close to the screen. If you want to ask her, maybe you're using the chat. That's fine also. Yes. Yeah, so what you can do, I noticed that you weren't doing and I didn't know why. What you can do is um, sit on height. Yeah, I can see, yeah. So angle it, sit on some height, and then maybe you can rest the back of your head against the bolster and you don't need those extra blankets. That might be a blessing in disguise. <laughs> yeah, thanks for clarifying. I didn't, I figured you, you were onto something, so yeah. Have that faith. So can you feel how the groins let go as you lie back? Now, at first you feel like, oh, I'm kind of falling. I'm not, what about all this verticality that you've been talking about ever since I started studying with you? Yeah, you know, some th sometimes we do one thing and sometimes we do another. I can see some of you are very happy to use this setup anytime. If you have a question, you can ask. I'm not sure if you're, because you're waving your hand. Yes, I have a, a question. Uh, the bottom of my back feels like it's collapsing. So lumbar spine feels like it's moving forward or back? Uh, it's collapsing, so it's kind of moving forward. Okay, so take your hands, adjust the flesh of your buttocks away from your lower back and then push your lower back into the bolster. Okay. And then let me know if that helped or not. Okay, great. So that, I'm glad that was helpful. So I just want to say what I often say, which is for some of you, I can see that this setup is better for you than a vertical setup. So let's say next week I'm teaching this pose, not in this way, but vertically, you could set up like this. You could say, oh, that was really right for me. It's good to open my chest, my groin softened beautifully. And you could set up like this. And, you know, I spent... 10 years, and it's not over, but for 10 years, I did alternative setups for most of my poses based on my work in the medical classes with Iyengar. And so I just got used to that. And it's fine. It actually teaches you a lot about your body and the practice of yoga. So embrace, you know, your individuality. Warren? So approximating this, like legs up the wall and doing this or? Yeah, we're actually gonna move out of this now. Okay. And um, take our, uh, we're gonna actually take Supta Virasana. Have you done Pariyankasana yet? No, but I think I'm done with Supta Virasana, Pariyankasana. 
stuff. <laughs> You're over it. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. So what about this post coming forward with a bolster underneath you? That's nice for menstruation. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. Okay. So you're going to sit up, take your hands to your inner knees, draw your legs together. Now sit in Virasana. This Maggie will be interested in this. I mean, everyone will, but this is um, a question that, you know, is an ongoing question, let's say. Now, some of you might need to sit on height here. You know that if your buttocks don't touch the floor or if your knees hurt, sit on height. Now, this is a very high version of Supta Virasana, right? It's similar to the other chair setup, but it's different too. So you're gonna lie back here. Mm -hmm. Here you go. So I'm just gonna circle back to this idea that sometimes less is more. <laughs> and again, one of the big differences between taking this version of Virasana, Supta Virasana, and lying all the way back is you can feel your abdomen, how soft it is, right? When we lie back, it's it stretches a lot. Now there's good reasons to stretch it a lot, but if you can't breathe, overstretching your abdomen <laughs> is not recommended. Okay, so this, this is, you know, most of you are healthy. I, you know, some of you have told me that you've had your experience with COVID. Some of you, it was, you know, more recently. Some of you, not as recent. Yeah, Didi, add a blanket because the Udana Valley throat area looked like it was pretty hard. Training. <gasps> Is it really? I can loan you a layer. Don't worry. I have a, a trash bag. No, no, no. I have a shell you can borrow. Don't okay. worry. Oh, funny. <laughs> I didn't see it on the app. So Brigitte wrote, she wrote her bike from her car. So look at you worried. Look at she just got a little concerned. <laughs> and so Sabuti the cat came immediately over to comfort her for her concern. <laughs> he's, he's not going to go with you on the bike in the rain. That's he's not going to take it that far. <laughs> so again, this is a version of this pose that you could do if the rest of the class was doing a version that's hard for you. And we've, you know, we've spent time a lot of time in classes with a variety of setups for Virasana and its variations. So here's another. Now, if your knees bother you, you can always come out of the pose, sit with your legs straight instead. Right, everyone, take your hands beside you, press your hands down to sit up. And then you can come onto your hands and knees. <laughs> there, you may think I'm the boss of teaching yoga, but I'm definitely not the boss of my house, okay? <laughs> So now we're setting up for Setu Bandha Sarvangasana, and I'm going to show a setup 
and you can decide, you know, how much of this setup feels right for you. Okay, so that's a big, that's a big um, entrance to it, right? So you'll take the short end of your mat against a wall. Keep all these props out that you have. Put the short end of the mat against a wall. Thanks. Use that last word slot. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Okay, so you have your mat. You're going to have your chair on your mat. And then if you have two bolsters, you can take two bolsters. Okay. You can take a bolster. I'll change the orientation. You can take a bolster and a couple blankets. And then you're going to, yeah, you're going to take your buttocks down, bring your legs up, and take your shoulders down. Now, if for some reason, the two bolsters or the bolster and the big pile of blankets feels like too much, you can reduce it. But because your legs are higher, you can take more height underneath you, and the result is that the chest opens more. Okay. So either two bolsters, a bolster and two blankets, a couple cushions, pillows, whatever you have. Yeah, and you'll adjust everything so it feels good. You want to make sure it doesn't feel too high. You can scoot a little closer and get the back of your knees on the chair. Yeah. yeah. Sort of a bent leg, kind of Vipurita Karni, Setu Bandha Sarvangasana pose. It should feel, you should feel a broadening underneath your pelvis, a nice lift to your chest area. Have any questions? Let me know. So another note that I know that COVID affects a number of things, but instead of listing all of that, we're just talking about things that are very common to a lot of people that go through the COVID infection and the other area besides the lungs is the kidneys. So this version, all versions of Setu Banda are good at fortifying the kidneys and fortifying the adrenal glands, which are right on top of the kidneys and also a part of the body that gets taxed whenever we're going anything that's difficult. If it's too high, reduce the height. If it's too low, you might say, well, I want three bolsters. Okay. <laughs> Just make sure the low back area is comfortable. I have a lot of questions today. So is it okay to go from a forward bend to a setubanda? Do a easy twist. Okay. Yeah, but it's not because of everything else we've done so far, it would be fine. But just you, if you're concerned, I know twists aren't great for you either. So just do a quick right left and you should be fine. Questions are good to ask because, you know, it's the format that we're using, it's, you know, every, everything's a little more distant. So questions bring information closer.
Now, as we stay in the pose longer, you're welcome to adapt and adopt the height. So it might feel at first, it's nice to have a lot of height, but after a while, it feels better to have less height. So I just invite you to reduce the height underneath you at any time. And then there's certain times in the month where having a lot of height doesn't feel good, right? Because the low back is tender. Other times you might say, oh, a lot of height feels good. So that's really good to be sensitive to that. And you know, this is part of us working with our ego instead of saying, well, I always use two bolsters. I have to use two bolsters. No, you say, it doesn't feel good. I'm not gonna use two bolsters now. So that's great. I'm open to questions in chat, or if you want to unmute yourself, I'm here. Start to get chilled, definitely throw a blanket over. You can, even if you've removed a bolster, place a bolster on top of your abdominal area. Namaste, thank you for your message. So when we raise the legs up higher, it provides an opportunity to stay in a pose a little longer. But even but if even with your legs up higher, it doesn't feel good to stay longer, then you can just remove the bolsters from underneath you and come into Shavasana with your legs on the seat of the chair. So Megan, what you could do if you had a Halasana box is to put the halasana box on top of your setu bandha bench. If you don't know what I mean, remind me. It's Yeah, exactly. I know you're thinking you need someone to put it there. It's better if you do, although this was a setup I was given by Guruji, and I figured out how to do it on my own. It was, you know, it was an ordeal, but <laughs> we can talk about it another time. Yeah, be nice to talk about it when you have another person in your studio. So uh, let's remember, yes, I'll show you that setup straight from Pune medical classes. <laughs> so what I'm showing is similar to that given, you know, what props people have and what you can do on your own. So wherever space and stillness is created, prana flows. So we started really feeling the prana of the prana vayu, the chest area. Now you may feel prana in the samavayu, that diaphragm band area. You may feel prana in the apanavayu, which is that belly area. You may feel prana in the udana vayu, which is the throat. And then the vyana vayu refers to the winds of the entire body. So you may feel, oh, not just those areas, but I'm feeling, you know, vitality in my legs, in my arms. 
brain, a vitality in the brain doesn't mean that you're thinking about a lot of things. It means that your brain feels vibrant, but peacefully present. Now from here, going to lift up the bolster or two bolsters, whatever you have left. Take your props to the side, allow your low back to release to the floor. You're welcome to put a bolster on top of your abdomen. You might not want to do that. I don't want Brigitte to do that necessarily. But if you don't, if your abdomen does not feel tender, it might feel nice to put that bolster there. So reading from Light on Life. Now it is time to go back to our own origins and yoga practice in order to further our inward journey. We have established through practice, but must not neglect the power of a healthy body. But a body without energy and consciousness is half dead. In chapter three on pranayama, we establish the vital importance of the power of pranic energy. Now I introduce another power, that of awareness, pranja, prajna, sorry. Prajna is awareness of consciousness. I mentioned only a few paragraphs ago a self-aware consciousness, but not did not give the Sanskrit translation. The power of self-awareness is pragya sakti. It is also translated as the knowledge of wisdom. These three powers have first to be brought about into alignment in order to coordinate with the power of the soul so that they may merge with it. Body power plus energy can, as I warned in chapter three, overload the system by putting too high a voltage through an inadequate circuit. It is by adding the power of the awareness of consciousness that we balance these huge forces within us. This makes possible expansion at every level but without danger, strain, or overload. The role of awareness is to fill the gaps that inevitably exist between the physical and organic sheaths of our bodies when we practice asana. Even when we are integrating the various sheaths of our body, there are gaps that we fail to fill with awareness and energy. The constant practice of all petals of yoga will eventually repair all flaws inherent within the human system. The power we generate through yoga practice must become coherent and indissolubly whole. Yoga practice is meant to knit the fibers to the skin and to the skin to the fibers so that they coil and interweave the outer kosha into the inner kosha, the outer layer to the inner layer. Only then can the oneness of the power we create within ourselves be integrated with the universal power that surrounds us. And in my words, I just wanna say, it's the oneness of the power we create within integrating with the universal power that surrounds us that is the arc 
of the Yoga Sutras. And according to the Yoga Sutras, the path of yoga. So now start to bend your arms, place your hands on your abdomen. Draw your knees gently towards your chest, roll onto your right side, and then press your left hand down to sit up. Namaste, blessings and peace.